Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drinks. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm not putting my donkey outside when I'm sad, okay? <laughs> I'm Nathan, and I'm nice. <laughs> and if you saw me with no clothes on until the day you die... You'd wish you had it. <laughs> Tidy browed cock on me. Ugh. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest feckin' endings. Oh, boy, I was waiting. <laughs> I, 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 who was going to try to do an Irish accent first? Yeah, I was like, who's going to do it? Who's going to do it first? Exactly. <laughs> Nathan, quick question. Yeah. How's the despair? <laughs> it's back a little, for sure. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to throw out off the top. Okay. Biggest hot take of the episode. Okay. This is the best movie we've done done this season right yeah oh yeah uh yeah without a doubt probably well i don't know we did do there will be blood true oh shit i wasn't there for that episode so it doesn't count yeah yeah and batman returns <laughs> also wasn't there for that one doesn't count wish master <laughs> also wasn't there for that one <laughs> All the episodes Mally wasn't here for are the best. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll fuck off on this one. Then. <laughs> this is an incredible movie. It's, it, yes. Oh man. Yep. Man, what a what a movie. This is one of those episodes where like I loved the movie so much I'm intimidated to talk about mm -hmm. it. This man doesn't miss. Doesn't miss. Yeah. Doesn't miss. And I, I'll say this. I, I this is only the second time I've seen this movie and. The first time I watched it, I was like, yeah, this is a really funny movie. It's really good. Yeah. It gets better the more you watch it. Yes. The second time I was like, this is the saddest fucking movie I think I've seen in a long time. Yes. It is the it is the most emotionally devastating movie to win best comedy at the Golden Globes. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> because it is frequently hilarious. It is yes. so funny. Yes. Yes. And I don't know how he does it, but he, Martin uh, McDonough knows how to make things funny, but also fucking devastating. Yes. This is the closest in tone and execution to one of his plays mm -hmm. that I think he's gotten in film. And I just, holy shit, this is a, this is a masterpiece. Like, yeah. it's a, it is a masterpiece. We, we should say, I mean, it, I think when the episode comes out, it'll be obvious too, but we are recording this before the Oscars. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it'll release before the Oscars, but this is nominated for a fuck ton of awards. Yep. Nine. It deserves uh, all of them? Yes. I mean, it's, I mean, it, it's in, it's at least in contention. So, yeah. so here's the, th here's the thing. When I first saw this movie, like I said, I was like, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. I, I, it's not as good as in Bruges, but I like it. And when it, all the awards started coming out, like all the nominations and everything, yeah. I was like, is it really that good? I was like, I like Barry Cogan just like everyone else, sure. but does he really deserve an Oscar nomination? And and indeed he does. Yeah, <laughs> on the rewatch, I'm like, oh no, yeah, he definitely does. Indeed he fucking does. Everyone, every every at performance in this movie is immaculate. Yes. Uh, all, uh, everything about this movie is, I mean, just the way it looks, the countryside, mm -hmm. you, you know, the talk about using locations to the the best of your ability. Right. Holy shit. Carter Burwell's score is gorgeous. Uh, yeah, I love everything about this. The pony is putting in work. The dog is adorable. <laughs> oh, if you'd listened, it was my horse's shite, not my pony shite. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much to talk about. There's so many great quotes in this movie, yeah. but... Uh, before we start, I just want to reiterate for maybe people that are tuning in for the first time, uh -huh. our show, The Silver Linings Playlist, is a show where we watch movies such as the movie of the week we're talking about this week, uh, The Banshees of Inishirin, and we cover movies specifically on the show that do not end in happily ever after endings. Yeah. Movies that do not have a neat little bow on the end, and we try to find the good in those movies. So, The Banshees has a pretty pretty bleak ending, honestly. Yeah. And there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. But I want to say right off the bat, last week we did Basic Instincts. This time we're getting into some actual, like, real things. Another B.I. movie, by the way. Uh -huh. Basic Instinct, Banshees of Inishirin. And we see Colin Farrell's pussy at one point in this we movie. We do. He crosses his legs. Oh, what? I... Honestly, I'd rather see Brendan Gleeson. Sure. I'm just going to be honest. I'd rather see his pussy. You want to see his mad eye? <laughs> his mad eye booty. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. Yeah. I deserve it. I want to start right away by saying uh, I, I'm bringing it back a bit for the show. Okay. I'm, br I'm bringing back Drink of the Film because okay. it only feels appropriate, right? Sure. This movie is filled with people drinking. Uh, it's set in Ireland. Yes. And I, I don't know the 
politically correct name for this drink anymore. It's certainly not what you're about to say. <laughs> no, and I, I'm just, I'm just going to call it what it's called because that's how you would order it at a pub or anything else. Uh-huh. But I am I am doing it. I I'm having some Irish car bombs this episode. Yeah. Apologies to the Irish, but you're a fucking wild man. <laughs> Priscilla's never had one. We did one off uh, off mic right before we recorded, and she's dead now. Yeah, <laughs> she's dead. Um, I would kill for a fucking Guinness right now. Uh, that's exactly what I'm having. I'm having Guinness for the stout and for the Irish cream. I'm having Carolyn's, which is another Irish brand for sure. It was so fucking funny, guys. She's never had one before, and I showed her how to do one. <laughs> yeah, and then she it said. Of dropping it in, she just daintily poured the Irish cream in the, <laughs> in the Guinness and started sipping on it. Yeah, I'm like that's that's not that's the smoothest bob that to ever go off of all time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's it's especially. I mean, yes, calling calling it an Irish car bomb is uh, truly insane of because course. of all of the, the actual car bombs. Of course, and I, again, I'm not saying that to be flippant. I just oh, generally course. do not know what it's called. No, I know in today's world, sure. but that's that's what co- colloquially everyone knows it is. So if I do tend to get a little loose on this episode, that's why. But uh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh, wow. And you're like, Bombs away. you're like Will Arnett and Hot Rod. You're just like, <sighs> boom, mm-hmm. there's the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I got to go get some flavored Dr. Peppers after this. Um, <laughs> guys, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of my favorite, like, just go to cocktails. Yeah. If I'm going to do something, if I'm going to splurge a little bit, you get something eccentric, but uh, it's it's delicious. Sure. So with that out of the way, the Banshees of Inishirin. Yes. Mally, is there any reason to particularly pick this one? Or is this one of the ones where you're like, this is another movie that also came out in 2022. So let's talk about it. No, actually, uh, I replaced a movie you did. Like, that was on the list for a long time. That's right. Yeah. After watching this movie like two weeks ago. Uh, oh, for the first time? Yeah. I was like, this is a better movie. Yeah. I don't want to talk about the other one anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's, we'll keep it in our back pocket because we may do it on the show eventually. I sat down to watch this like the day you updated the list and i was just like i can't uh okay i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait for the episode oh <laughs> like, so this is a first watch for you as well this was a first watch okay and, uh, so so glad i finally got around to seeing it yeah it's it's phenomenal and you say i never do anything nice for you nathan <laughs> i do <laughs> this movie devastated me yes. but I loved it. yeah you're fucking welcome <laughs> this movie is a perfect balance of comedy and tr- and drama and trauma. Yes, honestly, not enough Ed Sheeran in it though. Not you enough know? Ed like Sheeran. The, I was I was shocked. For the Banshees of Ed Sheeran. I mm-hmm. couldn't. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I was shocked he was not in here. Uh huh. But no, this movie, like Mally said, it gets better the more you watch it. Because, like I said, the first time I watched it, I obviously didn't know what I was in for. I didn't realize how bottled the movie is, and it's so simple, but it's it's genius and. One of the, the nominations this movie has for it, for the Academy Awards, is Best Original Screenplay. Yeah. And c- can someone look up real quick who is in competition for that? Because I can't think of something better. Uh, no. It's so tight. It's so simple. And they get a lot out of a little. Yes. It's, there's so much mileage on this movie. And Colin Farrell is- This is a career best performance. It's so good. And not to take away from Brendan Gleeson, but- Of course. There is something incredible about Colin Farrell playing this, quote unquote, simple man- Yeah. That- exhumes intelligence of a different type yeah and exhumes self-awareness and he he fucking crushed me on this rewatch same and there is a there's a great i can't remember who said it but there was a film critic who tweeted about this movie and said the the trick the brilliant thing about Colin Farrell's performance in this movie mm-hmm. is that we never see Colm and, and Parik as friends, right? Mm-hmm. We never see their friendship. We we only have the devastation and disappointment in Colin Farrell's face to tell us what he's lost. Yeah. I, I, I was going to say the trick of the movie is how uh, Colin Farrell does that thing with his eyebrows. Because uh-huh. what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. How does he do that? <laughs> yeah. There are multiple times in this movie where... He broke my heart without a single word. Twice in particular I can think of. Yeah. And it's the first conversation they have yes. outside the pub. I don't think we've been rowing. Yes. And the second time is him after he gets beat by the cop. Oh, my God. And he's in the, the buggy on the way home. DC, to answer your question, uh-huh. it is this. Okay. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh. The Triangle of Sadness. Oh. The Fablemans oh. and Tar. Okay. I don't actually. Oh, that's some stiff competition. Yeah. I don't know. It's, dude. The Oscars are tough this year. Yeah, it's a yeah. There's some hitters. It's tough, but 
I'm I'm gonna be maybe some hot take. I think you can take the Fableman out of every category it's nominated for. Oh, <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I already agree. It, I've seen it. It is. Uh, I don't know. I, next to the post, I cannot think of a more boring. I, and I'm I'm sorry. I know that's gonna blow some people away. Michelle Williams is great in it. Paul Dano's great in it. The movie itself is just a slag until the final scene. Really, which is worth it. Also, just to throw it out there, best adapted. Living, Top Gun Maverick, <laughs> Women Talking, Glass Wait. Onion, and All Quiet on the Western Front. Is it just considered adapted if it's a sequel to something? Yes. Because, okay. That happens, yeah. Okay, well, All Quiet's got to win that. Holy shit. One of the Sunset movies was nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay, and Ethan Hawke was, like, on the red carpet and go saying, like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know why we're here tonight, but <laughs> it's cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love Ethan Hawke. Me too. Oh, love him. But yeah, this is a stiff year for for competition for the oscars yeah more so than just the categories and the nominees but also the fact that it's airing at this as the same time as the season finale of the last of us i know <laughs> Ooh, i don't know and the super bowl for my understanding really so, all on know. the same night know. jesus <laughs> i think so wow. i think so big day for all the most annoying people in the world <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, is there a Taylor Swift live concert the same yeah, night? <laughs> I think there might be actually. Or no, she's announcing a new one and uh, it's on Ticketmaster's website as exclusive. So. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Side note, I, I, I'm going to put this out there. This might be also a hot take. <laughs> I could not imagine spending more than $100 to see any musical artist. Oh, I did that. You did. I just did that. I, I <laughs> <laughs> can't, I can't in good, in, and there's some artists. But, because, it, but it's because of scalpers, yes. like specifically because of scalpers, I had to spend that much. Of yes. course, yeah, yeah. No, I just, I could not in good conscience, like, swipe my credit card yeah. to see anybody for more than 100, like, no fucking way. I don't know, man. I'm just like, do am I allowed to be a sad boy if I don't see the Death Cab Postal Service co-headlining <laughs> tour? <laughs> Dude, my, my boss at work on a company call was like, I don't know if some of you are old enough for this, and he's like in his, like, late 40s. He's uh-huh. like, I think we might take a company trip for all of us to go see Death Cab and the Postal what Service. What the man. fuck? Why? That's funny. And I'm like... I I I wish I wasn't living in Florida and not LA right now. <laughs> that's where they're all going. <laughs> yeah, no, this the Oscars are gonna be interesting this year to see for sure. Yeah. But yeah, Banshees of Inishirin. Um I, I love this movie. So why don't we talk about the creation and all the behind the scenes about it? Yeah. Woo! So the year, as we mentioned, is last year, 2022. The director, as we've also mentioned, is Martin McDonough. The film stars Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson, Carrie Condon, and Barry Keoghan. I could not find a budget for this movie, but it did manage to gross $30 million worldwide. And that is not accounting for the re-release of the movie, as a lot of Oscar nominees did, where they got re-released back into theaters right after the nominations. Uh It currently has a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. Outstanding. Fuck. Yes. And it is nominated, as Miley mentioned, for nine Academy Awards, including Best Supporting and Leading Actor for all of the main cast. Yes. Best Original Screenplay, as we mentioned, Best Editing, Best Original Score, Best Director, and Best Picture. Hell yeah. And on top of that, it was nominated for all of the same categories at the BAFTAs, plus... Get this. They have a category for best British film. Oh, what? Which is nominated for Best Donkey. Best Donkey, of course. Which Clear winner. It's it's got some stiff competition for Best Donkey. You'd be surprised. There's 2022 for Oscar nominees was the year of the donkey. Uh-huh. It was a big do- it was a big year for donkeys. Yeah. Was, uh, did RRR had some donkeys. I think RRR had some donkeys. <laughs> this movie EO Triangle of Sadness has a donkey. Like I don't I don't know what it means, yeah. but 2022 was the year of the donkey. Year of the donkey. Is that the official Chinese New Year? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> and uh, you know, RIP the God Oatmeal. This is the year of the rabbit. So oh, man. And this film is also nominated for all of the same awards, minus Best Editing at the Golden Globes, and it won for Best Musical or Comedy, yeah. Best Actor for Colin Farrell, and Best Screenplay. Hell yeah! Yeah, this this movie is a tour de force. At the Golden Globes, they do they do they, for the acting categories. They also do comedy, drama, like all yeah, that as well, right? Exactly. Okay, yes, so he yes, won yes. for best actor, comedy or drama. I believe so. Or comedy, I believe so, yes. comedy or musical? Isn't that how they do it? Yeah, they they divide the two up for some reason. I don't know. Weird. I guess I've never seen a well. I guess maybe other than Les Mis, like a non comedy ish musical. Interesting. They all kind of have like a humorous aspect to them, right? Yeah, you should watch the last five years. It's hilarious. <laughs> copy that uh but yeah this movie is so it's it seems 
like it's like a the one to not necessarily uh, turn your back on, right? The one to not count out of the race right. because it's it's a sleeper. Yeah, I, I have a feeling this is going to be like the dark dark horse, dark yes. donkey of yes. the competition, the dark donkey. Absolutely. <laughs> no, uh, speaking of donkeys, have you, either of you seen Triangle of Sad? I've not. I've not. Man, it's it's a wild fucking ride. It is great. Yeah, it's definitely my top ten from last year. I definitely recommend, and you listener too, if you have not seen it, it's wild. It's a lot of fun. It's gross, but it's it's really fun. Yeah, and it also again also has a donkey in it. So I don't know what it, I don't know what it means, but it's some X Files shit. I want to believe in the donkey. <laughs> is it is that a sequel to Rhombus of Discontent? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. <laughs> and also a sequel of uh, Rectangle of uh, Empathy. Oh, sure, wow. of course. <laughs> Doctor Strange and the Triangle of Sadness. <laughs> Doctor Strange. I, hey, probably a better movie than the Multiverse of Madness. I'm Damn. just gonna put that out there. Yeah, still had Jim in it. Yeah, I could use a Triangle of Sadness with Doctor Strange in it. It would <laughs> certainly make the movie more interesting. Well, while we watch the trailer, I'm going to make myself another drink here, uh-huh. and uh, we'll be able to enjoy it together. You do you, bud. I respect you. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> that seems excessive. Let me pull the trailer up, because I forgot. You, yeah, you had the uh, you had the Basic Instinct trailer still pulled up, and I was like, Joe Esterhaus did a polish on this script? <laughs> For a full week, I've had the Basic Instinct trailer pulled yep. up. Yep. Like, let's fucking go. Oh, yeah, this trailer rules. Harlem Sonny Larry. Didn't you and he used to be the best of friends? We're still the best of friends. No, you're and not. Th- that's his real not. accent, right? Yes. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Now, if I've done something to you... Goddamn, dude, the costumes are so yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. To me. I just don't like you no more. Like me Look at how does he do that with his eyebrows? He looks like what, uh, what is the guy with the magnetic facial hair, the Wooly Willy or whatever? Oh yes, he does look like, like a Wooly Willy. <laughs> but he's always been done. The other night, two hours you spent talking to me about the things you found in your little donkey shite. <laughs> well, it wasn't me little donkey shite; it was me pony shite, which shows how much you were listening. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't stop talking to me, Colin. And if you don't stop bothering me, I have a set of shears at home. And each time you bother me from this day on, I'll take those shears and I'll take one of my fingers off with them. And I'll give that finger to you until I have no fingers left. Does this make things clearer to you? Not really, no. <laughs> it's from now. But shush like, Polly. You know, shush like. Yeah, I'd shush like. <laughs> God damn it, Brendan Gleeson is so fucking thing. good. He's, he's always so good. No, and and nothing against he Carrie Condon, but like, I, 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 we'll talk about her in a minute, but she's fantastic in this movie. She's so great. And she's been working with Martin McDonough since she was 18. She did his play, The Lieutenant Vinishmore. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about her in a second. Do you know who we remember for how nice they was in the 17th century? Who? Absolutely no one. Yeah, we all remember the music at the time. Everyone to a man knows Mozart's name. I don't, so there goes that theory. (laughs) (laughs) Can't be waiting around for any more of this madness. Let's just call it quits. We won't call it quits. We'll call it the start. God damn, what a good trailer. I've got chills. I just watched this movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally less than 24 hours, yeah. and I want to watch it a fucking game. Yeah. yeah. So what I was going to say, though, about Carrie Condon is she is such a conundrum, nailed it, because... Nice. What did you nail? The alliteration? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. No, 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 that's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, the little, it's the little things. Give him the win. I got to take my little victories, if you know what I can. I, all I really knew her from before this... Just let him have the win. ...was her role as Maddie's wife on Better Call Saul. Oh, yeah. And I forget every single time her name is brought up that she's Friday in those Iron Man movies. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. Sure. Fuck, that's yeah. right. So she's, she's been around. And then she pops up in this, and I'm like, huh. <laughs> like, what, what an interesting career she's having. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. And she's so good in Better Call Saul, guys. She's like, great. I know you guys... Didn't didn't necessarily watch every bit of that, but man, no, I haven't finished it yet, but I I will. Oh, you're in for a treat. Yeah, uh, the, 
the the last season of that show is balls to the wall. Yeah. It's fuck. I I don't want to say it's as good as Breaking Bad, but okay. it is certainly worthy of being spoken in the same conversation. Okay. About it, so no, she's always great. She's great in she's great in Ray Donovan. She's great. In, I haven't watched that Ray Donovan. Is it worth watching? I I, I liked it. Okay. Yeah. I I mean I, it's a it's a great cast, and I love uh, I loved her in uh, Three Billboards. Yeah. Oh, that's right. She is in Three Billboards, isn't she? Which is for me like maybe McDonough's like weakest film, but uh, I still there's still a lot to love in that movie. I think Seven Psychopaths is his weakest. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah, seven psychopaths for me. Yeah. I, I have. I need to rewatch that one. Three billboards just was such an emotional gut punch. Sure. And, and every actor in that movie is bringing it one hundred and fifty percent. Oh, yeah. oh yes, yeah. Sam Rockwell in that movie. Jesus, unbelievable. Jesus. Yeah. And actually, I know we're gonna get dark here for a second, Uh-oh. but Priscilla and I were talking about like if you were going to. <laughs> If you were going to kill yourself, how would you do it? And I'm like, I don't know. I think Woody Harrelson at Three Billboards kind of had it right with like, uh, keep the bag on, phone the boys, but don't open the bag, right? <laughs> like, keep it all self-contained. Yeah. I'm going to make another drink while we talk about this. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do that, bud. Okay. So where do, where do we want to start? I mean, I think not the opening shot, but one of the f- first shots of this movie yeah. is so fucking clever of Colin Farrell just smiling like this is the best day, another perfect morning yeah. with the literal rainbow <laughs> shining behind him. Yes. It's so fucking funny. He's so at peace with his daily routine. Uh-huh. You know, finish whatever the hell he's going to do and then get to the pub by two and then th- he's there for the rest of the day. That's a good question. What does anyone on this island do besides? I know what the bartender's job is. He's a farmer. He's he uh, he sells uh, he's selling milk at one point. Yeah. Okay, because the whole movie, I'm like, how does what the fuck do any of them do sure. throughout their day? Because it seems like they just go to the. Pub. I believe that this guy's up before the sun. Uh-huh. He gets his he gets his milk and done. <laughs> That's when I like to do it. He's up before the sun. <laughs> Is that what the Irish uh, Larry the Cable guy says? Milk or dud? No. Oh, <laughs> Jesus <my> God. <laughs> Guys, I've been drinking. I don't yeah. know if I told you. Yeah, yeah you did. We've, we've noticed. <laughs> Have another. How did we allow Larry the Cable Guy to happen? Like, as a, as a, as a nation, like, the Blue Collar Comedy Tour aside. It was a low point. <laughs> How did we allow it is the perfect verbiage I would ask for that question too. Like, how do we allow this to happen? As a as a nation, we didn't all come together and say he's gotta go. Like it's like, it's like post on eleven, like, how did we allow this to happen? Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I don't know. I don't know how we let that guy get away with it. The blue collar comedy tour was my 9-Eleven. <laughs> it's, I feel like Jesse at Breaking Bad. Like he can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> But no, this 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 opening scene's fantastic. It's so again, so simple. Yeah. You don't know what the movie's about. He goes to Calm's house. He sees him in there. Calm doesn't respond. And that is the movie in a nutshell. The shift from will I see you down there to I'll see you down there. Like yeah. he's trying to convince himself because yeah. he still doesn't know what's wrong mm-hmm. is so good. And, and just the colloquialisms of like how people talk in this movie is so fucking good. Yeah. Like I don't know much about Irish lore. I don't know much about Irish culture, uh-huh. but like th- this just feels right. Oh, the, all of the, uh, yeah, the dialogue all feels so authentic. Mm-hmm. Although I have seen some people like take McDonough to task for like Irish stereotypes. And he said like, I grew up in the country. Yeah. He's, he's like, I know these people. I, I I was there. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I wasn't there in the 20s, but yeah. I promise you, like, <laughs> this, the attitude is the same. Yeah. No, I, I think this opening is fantastic. Yeah. And then when Calm ditches his house yes. at a later point just because he knows that Podrick's there. He doesn't want to walk with him. Exactly. And yeah, they, they both end up at the at the pub. And there, there is something so incredible uh-huh. in the way that Colin Farrell delivers the line, but you liked me yesterday. Y- oh. yes. I don't know how he does it. It's so plain. It's like heartbreaking. It, it is. is. It's heartbreaking. It's just like he's grasping at straws. Yeah. And and with Colin responding with, oh, I liked you yesterday. And Podrick says, well, I thought you did. Oh, did I? Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. So I guess if you haven't seen the movie, we should set it up for you. Um, you should definitely see it, first of all. Yes. But the whole purpose of this movie, the whole premise is Podrick and Calm, played by Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell, not respectively. Yeah. <laughs> They're good friends in the 1910s in Ireland. And one day, Brendan Gleeson's character, Calm, just decides, my life has been nothing but dull conversations and nothing is, of significance has happened. Yeah. And I cannot keep doing this. I need to do something 
that will I will be remembered by. Something that will outlast me. Yes. Something people will remember me by. Yeah. And if I keep hanging out with Colin Farrell's Podrick, if I keep hanging out with him talking about nothing, nothing is going to get done. Yes. You know, nothing will happen. He literally shows him, I spent one day not speaking to you and I've already started to write the best song I've ever written. Yes. A lot like how I feel about this fucking podcast sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Like when, whenever you miss an episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, but, but the whole premise is like, I'm not going to talk to you anymore so I can do these things and have a fulfilled life. Yeah. And Podrick will not let it go. He keeps trying to find there's got to be a deeper meaning. Maybe Calm's just depressed. Right. Maybe I said something to offend him. Maybe I'm not assertive enough. Yes. I, you know, it, it, it's it's sort of the thing that happens anytime, a, you know, if you go through a breakup or something, yeah. you start you start critiquing yourself. You're like, oh, maybe I wasn't, you know, exciting enough. Or right. Maybe I don't dress cool enough. You know, he, he even like changes his fashion sense throughout yeah. the movie as well. It's basically the age old adage of it's not you, it's me. Yes. But the person on the receiving end will not believe that and says no it's got to be something i did and so he's like you said his whole tenor for the first half of this movie is essentially i don't know what i've done but i'll still apologize for it he says with all my heart i'd apologize and then i do like the calm lets him off the hook right away with no you didn't do anything yeah and then of course to further that because Podrick won't let it go, Kong comes to him with an ultimatum that says, if you don't leave me alone and don't stop talking to me, each time you you cross the line, I will go home, I will get my gardening shears, and I will <laughs> cut off one of my own fingers. Yeah. Brutal. Brutal. I love that it's that it's all self-inflicted, though. He's yes. not saying, I'll come to your house and cut off your fingers. I will cut off my own. No, because he he knows that Parik has a good heart. Yeah. And it's going, that is the thing that will stop him. Yeah. You know? And, and I also just love that their friendship is so well known on the island that, like, it is an affront to everyone's way of life yes. for them to not get on with each other. It affects everybody on the island. Even the priest is just like, aren't you being a little harsh to him? Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and this is the, the brilliance of the script because I love Brendan Gleeson. He's so likable. Yeah. But he is such a dick in this movie. Yeah. And somehow still likable. Right. Because there's he's not doing it to be awful. Yes. He's just... He's feeling this sort of innui or this like existential dread. He's having a midlife crisis. He's having a midlife crisis. The there this is during the Irish Civil War, so everyone's just sort of accepting that like you either stay in your lane and survive and leave no impact or you go and die. Yeah. And, like there's Everyone wants something more than this little town, yeah. and only a few of them ever actually try to go after it. Yeah, and, and the brilliance of this screenplay is that, like you said, this is set during the, the Irish Civil War. Right. And constantly throughout the movie, as characters are you know commuting from one place to another, they hear the gunfire across the, the, the ocean. And it seems to be getting closer. Yes. Like, it's louder each time. Yep. But it's so... It's so vague. Yeah. Because they never tell you if you don't unless you know your history, you have no idea who's fighting, right. what they're fighting about. And it's a perfect metaphor for Calm and Podrick. Like you have no clue. And McDonough plays with that a lot in his work. Like yeah. in in Lieutenant of Inishmore, like it's it's you know, set the some of the characters are literally like bombing, you know, government buildings and none of them really know what they're protesting against. They're just they're just locked in this struggle. Yes, and I should I should give a shout out uh uh Accommodation to Priscilla, who just brought me another Guinness. Thank you, baby. I love you. Bless. Thank you. Because <laughs> I ran out. Oh, <laughs> fuck off, Priscilla. <laughs> we get introduced to Dominic here, the great Barry Cogan. The Joker, baby. God damn it. I love that Calm is... I'm just kidding. I mean, not Calm. Uh, Podrick is, you know, considered, like, the dull one yeah. of this relationship between him and Calm. Right. But Dominic is essentially a fucking idiot. Like, yeah. He, and all well, he's, <laughs> it's never fully stated, but it sure seems that the way that his dad has treated him has severely stunted his development. Oh, well, yes. You know, yes. I think he plays that really well. He walks up just to the line of being a caricature, yes. like an offensive character. But it is it is a brilliant performance. I will add that on my first watch, I found him to be a caricature. Too much, yeah. Yes, but... It's so close to that for me, but yes. he, I, I think it's really brilliant. That's what I was going to say. On the rewatch, I because I know how this character ends and why he is the way he is, of course. I did find this way more believable. And man, like the way he gets introduced, 
is one of the funniest fucking lines of the movie and it's so stupid but he's like Podrick is walking back from the pub after uh Calm and him have had this conversation <laughs> and he says look what i found a stick with a hook what would you use it for i wonder to hook things that were the length of a stick away probably yeah <laughs> It's good. And it's also like he's just so desperate to make conversation. Yeah. And, you know, he also has that great line where he's like, he doesn't mess with wars or soap. Oh, I missed that line. <laughs> it's really good. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's, but yeah. Barry Cogan may be one of the best. He's not small, a small actor, but maybe like one of the best actors like that people don't know by name. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Oh, no. When he popped up in The Green Knight, I was like, oh, that weird guy. Ooh, like, oh, man. Great performance in The Green Knight, too. Nathan, have you seen Killing of a Sacred Deer? I, I have not. Oh, my God. Yeah. You got to see it. Okay. He's, I don't want to say the villain of the movie, uh-huh. and, and we've covered it on the show, but right. like... His performance, that was the first time I really sat up and took notice of him. It's incredible. You might actually He's really. really fucking good in that. Okay. I'll check it out. Yeah. You might, you might actually really fuck with that movie. Okay. It's, it's one of my favorites and it's got Colin Farrell in it as well. Yes. I think that was the first thing I saw him in. I think, I think for me too. That's, uh, that's the director of The Lobster, yep. right? Yeah. It's the movie he did right after The Lobster. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I love The Lobster. And the Lobster's great too. And then uh, The Favorite. And... Oh yeah. Love The Favorite. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine falling asleep naked in your rocking chair with a police hat on yes. after jerking off? Yeah. I absolutely can. You clearly did not grow up in the country. <laughs> <laughs> country boys make do. You, made, you said that not like it was a typical Monday night for you. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. What do you think I do as soon as we're done recording? He, he, he watches The Last of Us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I was just about to say, for the listener who doesn't know, we typically record these on Sundays. Uh-huh. And yeah, we got to wrap this shit up within the next hour or so so we can get to The Last of Us because yeah. I can't I can't wait. Uh-huh. But yeah, th- this shot is so fucking funny. And them trying... Trying to sneak through the room fucking kills me. <laughs> so good. What does he say? He's like, Daddy will Daddy will beat our ass if he if we wake him up when he's been wanking. Yes. Is that the line? Yes. Yes. It's insane. <laughs> and I mean we've all been there. Oh, of, yes, course, of course. Of course. And they go outside and they start drinking. And then I, I love the just obliviousness that Dominic has in terms of relationships, because he's like well, you saw my daddy without clothes on. Do you ever see your sister with no clothes on? Right. And of course, Podrick's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? He goes, no, absolutely not. That's not something I want to talk about. And he says, what kind of a brother are you? <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. Well, I mean, this is, that's like the, it's funny in isolation, but it's also the first inkling that this kid has the worst home life. Oh yes. my God. I, he he might be the most sympathetic character in the movie. Yes. Hands down. All right, all right fellas, I'm going to have another ICB here. Hope you don't mind. Jesus what the, Dustin, Christ, uh, Dustin. What? Everything okay at home, bud? You've had one every nine minutes. No, well, look. <laughs> These guys go to the pub so much throughout this movie. I gotta keep up. I guess like, it's not authentic if I don't. And plus, you're gonna, gonna make- fucking look like Mrs. McCormick by the time this is done. <laughs> is that the uh, quote unquote old hag that's the just walking witch, in the movie? Yeah, the cool ass fucking witch in this movie. It just makes me think of the woman from Resident Evil Village. <laughs> just <laughs> constantly showing up and just like sure. spouting nonsense. Yeah. Speaking of nonsense, the the April Fool's Day reveal is uh, fantastic. The relief on his face when he thinks that he's figured out that the this was all a prank and that he can just go to calm and everything's going to be fine. Uh, like, I fucking got it. Yeah, I get it now. This is also when we're introduced to uh, Carrie Condon as Siobhan, mm-hmm. who asks him, you know, like, don't you ever, you know, they talk about being lonely and he just sort of blows her off. Dude. Like, he <laughs> lo- <laughs> well, she says, do you ever get lonely, Podrick? And he goes, what is wrong with everybody? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's what is it? What's with everybody these days? Uh-huh. And it's clear as the movie goes on that he loves her more than life itself. Yeah. But like, they're both fighting the loneliness in their own ways. Yes. Like, she's clearly like this outcast. Uh, uh, low key, she's the most outcast person in this town. Yeah. yeah. Like, everyone's just sort of like, ugh, she reads. Yeah, she's clearly an intellectual that longs for more engaging things. And I think maybe given the circumstances, her and Calm would have been good friends. Yes. Right? Yeah. But maybe the best part of the movie uh-huh. is when she ousts Calm for not being as smart as he thinks he is with the Mozart stuff. Love that. Which we'll get to in a little bit. Yes. Uh, we should mention both of their parents have died. We don't know wh- how exactly. Right. But they're living together. And Padre goes to the pub again and tries to talk to Calm once more. 
And this is where I wrote down, like, okay, Calm is just a straight up asshole because mm. if you decide out of the feckin' blue <laughs> feckin'. that you want to be surrounded with more intellectual people or whatever, right. you break up with the guy properly. Sure. Yes. You explain it to him. Yes. Well, he does explain it to him he uh, tries, to his credit here. Yeah. He tries, but not with an empathetic bone in his body. It's like, this is all about me. Uh, see, I think there's so much sadness in his eyes. No, like, there is. There is sadness in his eyes. He, he's playing this as like, it sucks that I have to end this friendship in order to live the life that I th- live the last third of my life the way I want it to be. But my counterpoint would be sure. Podrick is clearly a good friend to him because he idolizes that guy. And it's fine if he you does, want. He does, but he also just kind of tells him like, well, why don't you just shove your depression down like everybody else does? Right. He's but- not necessarily... It, it's Sometimes it, it still comes back to a thing of like, but I want this friendship, so that's what's important here. I agree with you to an extent, okay. but my whole my whole point is that if you're going to do this, you have to have a clean break. Yeah. And I think that sadness in his eyes is him maybe even like unconsciously sending out a signal to Podrick. Yeah. And that's how Podrick misinterprets it of like, this guy just needs some extra love. Right. Maybe he's depressed. Maybe something happened. And I... I don't think anyone is necessarily in the wrong, but uh, I think if calm, if anybody is, it's calm. But it does, it like, it also gets under Parik's skin, right? Of course. Because he wants, he desperately, he's like, do people talk shit about me behind my back? Do people think I'm stupid? Yes, Calm makes a comment of like, I can't keep having dull conversations with you. And he says to Shaban, I, he's the dullest one on the island. Uh-huh. And it's, that's not the reason you should be doing this. You could be like, look, it's not productive. Right. Right. You make it about yourself. It's, I, I'm not doing the things I want to do because I'm hanging out with you too much but he doesn't he throws him under the bus he's like, i can't keep having dull conversations with you and talk about nothing but also parik is clearly the more emotional of the two of course and then column is like trying to look at this logically, logically. yeah like i don't have a whole lot of time left yeah. i don't want to hurt your feelings yeah. but i i'm going to because this is what i want i want but to- that's the way he should go about it like oh totally I feel- I feel like he's almost sending mixed signals sure. to an extent. I do like that he comes to him the second day and he's like, look, I was really mean yesterday. I was yeah. too harsh yesterday. Yeah. Here's here's the deal. Yeah. I do think that's a good a, a good attempt. Yeah. But if anyone's a villain in this movie besides the police officer, it's, it's calm. Interesting. The way I see it. Uh, so he also, we have that good line that's in the trailer of, you talked to me for two hours about things you found in your pony shit. And I'm like- <laughs> What could you find in your pony shit that you talk about for two hours? Again, you clearly did not grow up in the country. (laughs) (laughs) Like... What the fuck are you? Are you finding a Tesseract? Are you finding the fucking puzzle box from the Hellraiser series? You would be fucking surprised, bro. <laughs> you find some bean water? I'm like, what the fuck do you <laughs> what, um, oh, Wait, pause. Bean water? <laughs> Didn't you drink green bean water? <laughs> that's a throwback to your story. Oh, fuck. That's right. Yeah. yeah, but you said you drank bean water. <laughs> I've been, I've, I've done shit. I, I do like that uh, when, every, because this is, the, of course, the 1910s, uh-huh. everyone on the, on the island is Catholic. Uh-huh. You have to go to church and when they find they come across dominic who's been just just had the shit beat out of him yeah and she shabazz like oh my god she she expresses genuine concern right and then when he asked to stay the night her expression immediately goes to eh. <laughs> yeah it's uh what do they call they call them um nimbas or whatever not in my backyard <laughs> <laughs> like nah, i feel sorry for you but uh, i don't want yeah. you in my fucking house <laughs> well it's like i mean i get it it's like it's like when your car got stolen yeah you're like oh man my car Car got stolen. It's like, oh, that sucks. Then you're like, oh, can I get a ride? Yeah. Ah. Okay, Nathan, have you heard about this? Have you heard this story? Wait, no. <laughs> okay, when I was in LA, I lived in a gated, like a like a gated parking garage. Yeah. Like in my apartment. Like yeah. it, it was it was hard to get into if you lived there. Right. <laughs> and it was tandem parking. Yes, it's tandem parking and you could not get out unless you also had the key. <laughs> okay. And my car got stolen out of That's it. crazy. And, and, and the funniest part about it, because it's, it's over now, but like the funniest part about it was I got to watch the security footage and it said 3 a.m. It's just all it was is one of those people like it's they use the uh, it's like a it's like a car key that is electronic that you could just ride up and down the streets, press the button, and oh, eventually yeah. a car will react to it, right? Like, if you have the right one. Sure. And I just watched this motherfucker stroll out of the fucking garage with my fucking car. <laughs> like, it's nonchalant as fuck. That sucks. It sucks, but it was the funniest. It was so casual about it. It was so fucking funny how <laughs> casual this guy was about it. 
So yeah, uh, I guess if if you're a car owner, tend to park you. Make sure you're the one parked in the front. Of course. So. <laughs> one of the best line deliveries is in this scene. Uh-huh. Is when uh, it's when Dominic starts flirting with Siobhan and she just goes, "I'm gonna go to bed." And he <laughs> looks over at Parik and goes, "Foiled again." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic's got maybe the fu- some of the funniest lines in the fucking movie. Yeah, yeah he's great. So it, it's clear that like he's attracted to Siobhan and right. he wants to hit on her, but he doesn't know how. He has no clue. And maybe the most heartbreaking scene in the movie is with him later on with Siobhan. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. This is where Calm gives the, the ultimatum to Podrick about, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to start cutting my fingers off. Uh-huh. My question is, is there some kind of symbolism that I'm just not connecting with, with the fingers of in particular? He's basically just saying, like, you've already wasted all of my time not being able to write music. This is going to, it's more of a, like a symbolic gesture. That's yeah. what I thought. You're still taking away my best years of writing. That's what I thought. Because he wants to be a musician and make music, uh-huh. and fingers, you kind of need to make music. Right. So, yeah. You mentioned that the the one of the lines from uh, Dominic in this dinner scene between him and uh, Shaban and Padre. Yes, uh-huh. maybe my favorite line of this whole part is after uh, Shaban goes to bed. He says, "Jesus, this is a depressing house." <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, dude, you get beat at home." Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. that's a violent house, right. not a depressing one. <laughs> True, and and he also says touche, and then Colin Farrell goes, "What?" He goes, "Touche." It's French. He, like, he, he, no, he, Colin Farrell goes, to what? Yeah. He goes, Shay. Yeah. To Shay. It's French. And then earlier in the scene, Dominic had made fun of, like, French talk, yep. basically. He's yes. Like- <laughs> and I'm like, Dominic's not as dumb as he seems. No. Like, I, I love that. Yeah. I, I thought that was, it's such good character, like, creation. It's so good. He's so three-dimensional. Yeah. And there's, there's still, like... A, a sense of protection there mm-hmm. because this the next scene is when Parik calls out Dominic's dad in the in the shop. Man, Podrick telling the woman that's obsessed with getting news. The, yeah, the gossip. Yeah, about Dominic's father beating him while that guy is standing right there, it, and he's a police officer. It feels so good to see that fucker freeze up. Oh. Like it is. Oh, it feels great. Maybe the most depressing part about this movie is that that, that guy doesn't get really any comeuppance. No. I mean, yes, Brendan Gleeson punches him at one point, but I'm like, I want that guy dead. Yeah, totally. <laughs> no, that's a great scene. And then, yeah. It leads into my f- my favorite scene of the movie. Is it the, the carriage ride home? Yeah. Man, it's... What a gut punch. Like, Podrick just crying in the carriage while Calm steers the horses is so fucking sad. And he leaves him at a literal crossroads. I literally wrote, I wrote that down. I was like, it's a literal fork in the road. Yeah. Like, it's it's so fucking sad. Uh, and from Colin Farrell's perspective, like, this guy just cannot get a leg up yeah. because- He's he's come to find out that everyone in the town essentially thinks he's one of the dumbest people. <laughs> His best friend has cut him off. Yeah. His sister is just constantly riding him. Yeah. And now he's gotten beat by the local police officer. Right. So now you're not safe. Your family's not safe. Yeah. You know, and he asked people, he's like, do you think I'm dumb or do you think I'm, you know, boring? And they're just like, no, you're just one of, you're one of life's good guys. Yeah. You know? Like, they're just like, they're like, you're fine. One of, one of life's nice guys. Yeah. I, I love that he asked Shabbat, he's like, am I the dumbest? us on the island she goes no she goes he goes you know dominic uh, <laughs> and, then, right. and then she goes but well then he goes but but who's after dominic she goes ah, i don't want to really judge people don't don't worry <laughs> about it it's so sad and i don't here's the thing i don't think podrick is dumb no i think he's just uneducated if that makes sense and he's bewildered yeah. like this is so beyond him that someone could just cut him out and i love the scene where he goes drunkenly to calm in the pub uh, and confronts him in front of everybody because calm has started like trying to associate with this more uh intellectual crowd to these musicians he's trying to teach them the song he's writing mm-hmm. and they're jamming you know the cop is still trying to force conversations in the bar mm-hmm. so parik like calls him out again Again, and this time adds in that he's sexually abusing his son yeah. and like in front of everybody it's it's intense and maybe my favorite line from the movie yeah is when calm is trying to explain himself yes you know he's giving examples of like look no one remembers anyone from like the 17th century except mozart because of his music yeah and he says music lasts poetry lasts and then Padre hits him back with and so does kindness yes and i'm like oh my fucking god oh for me it's when he says something like no one's ever going to remember any of of us you know calm says no one's gonna remember anyone on this island in a hundred years yeah and parag just tells him like 
I'll remember Shaban. Yes. I'll forever remember her. And yes. he, he doesn't know she's there. Yeah. yeah. And it's the look on her eyes yes. is, is, oh my God, it, it, cr- it like broke my heart. And, and he says, my father was kind. My mother was kind. My sister was kind. Yeah. And I'll remember them. Yes. He comes to this conclusion that maybe, maybe Calm never was nice. That's the thing. <laughs> like, he says that. He says, yeah. I, I used to think maybe you were nice yesterday, but maybe you were never nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe I just thought you were. It's so fucking good. Because I can could, I could realistically see myself aligning with both of these guys yeah. in their arguments, right? Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Like, Brendan Gleeson is, quote unquote, the villain of the movie. Sure. But he's, he's got some fucking points. Yeah. Like, yes, Mozart's remembered because he did something incredible. Uh-huh. But, like, he's also remembered by the people that were in his life. And that's the more important part, right? Right. Is, you don't have to do something grand. You just have to be a good person and people will remember you for it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I just, I think the whole thing is, is it's spot on. Well, and then Parik, like, he can't help but try to make small talk. Yeah. Like, it's not, there's not a malicious bone in his body until he feels like he has fully been wrong. Yeah. You know, like, he... Yeah, he, he's not he's not trying to drive calm crazy yeah. he just does genuinely want to know like hey how's your song going yeah. how are you doing and, and i don't think he realizes the the extent that calm is willing to go no he's not calling his bluff yeah. he just never believes that he'll do it right because who would and oh buddy does he it's such a crazy fucking thing to even comprehend yes that someone would do that to themselves out of pettiness yeah essentially pettiness and i we talked about already but i love Love that Shabon calls him out for not even getting the century that Mozart was alive right. <laughs> yes. He's not as smart as he thinks he is. He's just doing this. He's lording it over yes. him. And yeah. It is a depression. Like, as much as Calm doesn't want to admit it, it is him just depressed. He's having a midlife crisis. Oh, that's a depression move for sure. Yes. You push everyone away from you. Or you, you put, you try to reboot yourself in a way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's absolutely that's what it is. And I love that she does that in front of everybody. Yes. Yep. She says Mozart's the 18th century not the 17th or whatever she says yeah and uh because i fuck i don't who could fucking know but (laughs) it's it's a great putting him in his place and i think he does take that to heart yeah so also i mean then he then he does it he he cuts his fucking finger off and he doesn't even wrap his hand oh my god that was bugging the fuck out of me the first reveal that calm did it holy shit yeah because as as a person watching this movie i'm like well that's not gonna it's there's no way he's gonna just fucking do that and then he fucking does and throws it at the house throws it at the house of of podrick and then we get a shot of just the dog licking his open wound. Yeah. Oh my god! I respect the pettiness. Ooh, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I would never do this. Sure, but man, do I aspire to that. what a move, <laughs> power move. It yeah. is, and to do it to yourself is is the power move, right? Right. Because you could cut anybody's finger off, and it doesn't affect you physically right but to do it to yourself out of pettiness that is a new level that i aspire to yeah with garden shears with gardening shears in the 1910s not even like good gardening shears probably uh. <laughs> oh oh it's rough and then calm tries to like i said tries to uh get more involved with uh musicians and intellectuals and Podrick sees this as an opening. Right. Wait, also, I just want to note, he doesn't, like, go for the pinky first. No! He goes for his fucking index finger. Yeah. What a what a wild man. What a crazy motherfucker. It immediately makes it harder to play mm-hmm. the violin. Oh, that's, like, that's a good note, too, is when he does cut off his first finger, they they immediately cut to him trying to play music. Yeah, yep. it's it's a little bit off. It's, it's a not little totally off. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. And Calm is trying to uh, talk with this musician that's from out of town. Oh, my God. Uh, Podrick offers to give him a ride home as he sees him walking down the street. Yeah. This is insane because... This is the funniest scene in the movie. Pod- like, <laughs> no doubt. Podrick tries to be tries to pawn this guy off, basically. Try to get him out of the picture. Uh-huh. And is like, hey, you're not the so-and-so from the island, are you? And the guy's like, yes, I am. You're, you're Declan, right? The student? Yes. And he's like, <laughs> oh, there was a phone call for you. Uh, you're You're... Mom got hit by a bread van. <laughs> and he's, the guy, the guy tosses out. Oh no, that's how my dad. Died. No, it's yeah. He he says first. He says uh, it's a message from your mom, and he goes, oh, "My mom, my mom died." And he goes, "Oh, uh, well, maybe it was your auntie." That's right. That's right. A bread van. You know, it's not impossible. Your bread van hit your dad. They crash into people all the time. Yep. And he goes, "I know. That's how my mammy died." Oh my god! <laughs> if it's the same feckin' bread van, I'll kill him. It's so good. Oh. Like, 
the idea that this guy thinks he's out for revenge. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. I kind of want to see the movie of this guy going John Wick against the brand van driver. It's like, <laughs> oh my god. It's it's that would be fucking great. Martin McDonough knows how to ride that line, dude. He knows exactly when you need some comedy to fucking like relieve you of all this drama. It's yes. so fucking funny. Oh, it's so absurd. Yeah. And we get maybe the most heartbreaking scene of the movie, which is uh, Dominic asking Shaban if she could ever fall in love with a boy like him. Yeah. Gosh, we have a lot in common, don't we? Calling old people ghouls and all that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, him sneaking up on her and her going, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I love when he talks about how great the big old lake is and he just does like a half-hearted wave out at the lake as uh-huh. if to like show it to her Vanna White style. It's it's a oh, God, he's so good in this. You know, it's funny, David because you haven't seen it in terms of physicality yes. his performance in killing of a sacred deer is almost identical to this interesting okay it's all mouth breathing wide-eyed like i god i i'm so interested to hear your thoughts on that movie okay it's so good meanwhile he's also convinced parik that maybe he needs to try to be more assertive yes. because he's like oh he seemed to respect you more when you were mean last night yeah because we didn't talk about it but padrick left leaves the pub before Calm says that was the most interesting he's been. Yeah, <laughs> yes. maybe maybe I do like him. Yes, yeah. for standing up for himself. Yeah, it, it's so it's so good because every time Podrick does stand up for himself, it feels vindicated. But it also feels like he's like I'm gonna try this out for once. And- but, but it works. Yeah, I think I think it's so like he is so confident in those scenes, even when he says like I don't even know who Mozart is. So yeah. that gets rid of your theory. That's not like a, a jab right. at calm, I think. I think that's him. Oh, no, totally. But I, I also love, he kicks the door in, mm-hmm. comes inside, calms dog, <laughs> like, licks at his hands, and he starts giggling, and then he's like, ah, oh, I didn't come here for licks, I'm here for business, you know? I relate <laughs> to calm holding his dog in his arms while he's singing so oh, fucking for hard. sure. I do that with my husky. Uh-huh. I fucking pick him up, and I'm like, just singing to him, <laughs> so it's so good. And then, to couple that, Podrick says it takes two to tango. Yeah. You dance with your dog. <laughs> it's so good. He's like, I don't want to tango. It takes two to tango. You were dancing with your dog. <laughs> it's a really great line delivery. Mm-hmm. I also just love that Colm is fully admitting, like, yeah, it's just me that's doing well. Yeah. I, I get it. You're right. I am hurting you, but I have to preserve myself. Yeah. It's such a layered characterization, I feel like. I, I don't think it's this scene, but when Padre confronts Calm one of the times yeah. and then starts to walk away and turns around and says, by the way, how's your song going? And Calm just goes, what? what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so good. It's, it's the same scene where he starts to reach out and pat him on the shoulder. And yeah. then he's like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's so good. Because the whole the whole town is like, dude, he is serious even before he cuts his fingers off. Yes. Yeah. He's like, just leave the guy alone. Stay and, in your lane. Yeah. And and Shab- like, actually cuts off his first finger and Shaban and, and Podrick are having lunch together. And yeah. he's like, I think I should go say something to him. And <laughs> the way Shaban's like, are you feckin' stupid or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, and he says, we've already been over this. No, I'm not stupid. Yeah, we talked about this already. We've already talked about this. I'm not the stupidest one on the island. The closest <laughs> that Colm comes to telling Parik that he means something to him still mm-hmm. is when he says, I was thinking of playing my song at your funeral. Right. And that's where we get the reveal of the title that he's calling his song The, the Banshees, Banshees of, of Inishirin. Yeah. Credits. Love and it. And Padraig goes, there's no Banshees on Inishirin. He goes, nah, I like the double S sound. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, once again, and proving that Calm is not as smart as he thinks he is, right? Right. And this scene is so fucking gut riching because this would have worked. Like, it's clear that Podrick got through to him. Yeah. But he just, on his way out, says, oh, I don't feel so bad now for telling that guy that you were trying to be friends with that his uh, dad was dead or whatever. Right. Yeah, he totally, yeah, totally bought. Yeah. He tells on himself. Shoots himself in the foot. And maybe the funniest part, too, is after he leaves, the dog starts dragging the guarding shears outside the house. It's so cartoonish, but it works perfectly. Yeah. It gets me so, so well. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. And Calm is, if if nothing else, this dude's a fucking badass yeah. because he goes straight for the other remaining four fingers. Uh-huh. Oh, holy shit. It's not just the second one. He's just like, fuck it. They're all coming off because Podrick betrayed me. And he throws them one, one at, at a time. time. Oh, what a, what a badass. What a fucking badass. Just clunk. Clunk. And we forgot to mention, uh, at before this, uh, Shaban got a letter that's basically saying, hey, they need you over on the mainland. We could use someone with your expertise. A library gig. Yeah. 
She's she's it's for a job. So uh, Podrick is left alone on the island, and he he doesn't know how to like communicate yeah. what he's feeling. Yeah. Like uh, everything he tells her, his concerns all seem to be based around how it's going to affect him. Yes. Yep. Yeah, he he's he's a child that's being told, "Hey, your mom has to go away yeah. for a little while." Oh, uh, he he's it's so heartbreaking, yes. it's so pathetic. Yes. It really is, and that's even before Colm comes up the path, looking like something out of a fucking urban legend. Oh with my his god, hand just dripping, his hand dripping, just completely devoid of fucking fingers, pouring blood, pale in the face. <laughs> like he does not look well. Yes, but I, I mean the wide shot yeah. of of Shaban on the boat and then it cuts to the wide shot of Podrick yeah. up on the aisle like, waving the edge of the aisle waving it's so fucking incredible it's gorgeous and yeah. then the reveal that Calm is there with with him watching out of focus in the background that Podrick never even sees it's really well done see I thought it was I thought that was Mrs. McCormick oh yep. you might be right I mean it's out of focus it's hard to tell interesting I assumed it was Calm I love that I thought I thought it was Calm as well oh then that's yeah I love that even more if that's the case that's interesting Okay, I, I didn't even think because Miss McCormick is, some, is kind of innocuous to the film. Like she's, it seems like she's a harbinger of death yes. or something like that. But like she's like the last remnant of what a banshee might have been. Right. If it right. like doesn't, if it wasn't, you know, the, the the metaphor he uses is that they're no longer like banshees aren't useful anymore. They're yes. not alerting people to death. They're just watching us fuck ourselves over. Yes, and I, I just I can't get over that. I, I can't, I've already talked about. It, I can't get over that shot. Yeah, it's so excellent. He's so small on the screen. It's it's a great shot. The most hopeful. I've felt watching a movie in ages is when he comes back home and finds Jenny. Mm. So Jenny is the donkey. Yeah. So he comes back home. Uh, he sees a blood trail. Yeah. He falls into the back of the house and then finds out that his donkey, who is like his little pet that he is so attached to, yeah. has died from choking on the fingers that come through at the door. And bit its own tongue off in the process. It's the saddest fucking scene. It's, dude, it's so fucked up. It's yeah. fucked. And the shot of him sitting in the cabin by himself holding Jenny in his lap, mm -hmm. like, I, I'm like getting choked up thinking about it right <laughs> it's, now. It's, it's sad. It's awful. It's horrible. But I will say, after that reveal, he goes straight to Calm, and he says, "Your my little donkey choked on your fat fucking fingers. Uh -huh. And he says, to our graves, we're taking this. To one of our graves, anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy fuck. That is... That's the moral of the story right there. Yeah. Revenge will put you in the fucking grave. And at two o'clock tomorrow, I'm coming back and I'm burning your fucking house down and I don't care if you're inside. Two o'clock on the Lord's Day. Yeah. He says, I won't even check to see if you're inside. Yes. yes. Yeah. And I I think this is almost Shakespearean in the fact that when we do cut to that and Calm leaves church and everyone sees him leaving. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, Podrick leaves. That Calm is inside the house. Uh-huh. When he sets fire to it, uh -huh. like Calm is almost ready to accept that what he did is is worth this. It's worth it. It's worth punishment. Pun being it, it's self flagellation. Well, and beyond that, we've just seen Calm with his new, you know, drinking and music buddies mm -hmm. trying to conduct them by waving his fiddle at them. His stub of a hand. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, he bleeds all over the table. It's. I mean, he's got nothing left. He's already thrown it all away in this like petty little standoff. Yeah, this little charade that he put on. And I gotta say, Parik going over to Calm's house and petting the dog mm -hmm. is the Michael Myers looking at the baby's crib of this season. Oh my like, god, <laughs> yes, yes. For half a second, I was like, is he gonna cross that line? Yes, yes, absolutely. And Shabon writes him a letter that's like, hey, you should come to the mainland. It's so much better. Yeah. There's no worry about like island life here. Everyone is doing their own thing. They're not worried about everyone else. And also one of the funniest lines of the movie yeah. is when uh, Podrick writes a letter back and <laughs> she uses the word ensconce. And he says, obviously, I don't know what ensconce is, but I thank you for the offer. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's so good. I do love that that moment, but I... If I had one qualm with this movie, it's that it seems like this is the next day and there's no way in hell he got a letter from her that quickly. Right. Yeah. But it's still a it's still a great narrative device, Absolutely. too, because it's him trying to pass off. Jenny's fine. She's you know, she doesn't want me to leave. Yeah. I have to stay here because of the animals and everything. I do love the little joke, though, because she's always yelling at him about having 
the animals in the house. Yes. And the moment she's gone, all the animals are in the house. Of course. Because well, earlier in the movie, he tells her, I'm not putting the donkey outside when I'm depressed. Yes. Yeah. And now that Jenny's gone, he needs all of them in there to keep the depression away. He, yep. He's sleeping in the bed and there's the cow just right next to him. Oh, my standing God. There. Which I will say, yeah, having having a cow walk around my house would stress me the fuck out. Like, right? Something's going to get knocked over. And him crying himself to sleep saying, come home, Siobhan. Ugh. Uh, it just, it just, he's, he obliterated me in this movie. Like, he's so great. And we get the reveal that Dominic is dead in the water. Yeah. Because his dad killed him is so fucked. Oh, see, I don't think he killed him. Oh, I do. I thought it was a suicide thing. Really? I thought it was a suicide as well because his dad looks shocked to see the body. Yeah. I don't. I think the, I think the dad lashed out in a drunken rage, killed his son, and that's his like come to Jesus moment when he's like I killed my son interesting I don't my my read was that it was a suicide I will say every review I've read chalks it up as a suicide that's interesting okay before this is also he gets he gets rejected by Siobhan and he has that conversation with Parik where he basically is like you're just like the rest of them you're just as mean as everyone else in town yeah like you're you're not nice anymore that's fair but I always I took it as because like when the dad beats Colin Farrell in the town he says tell my son to get home or I'll beat him again or something like that. I took that as the dad, because he's always drunk, uh-huh. just beat his son to death and then threw him in the river and then is having a clarity moment when he sees him. Interesting. See, I had taken that as Dominic hasn't been home for days sure, because sure, he sure. threw himself in. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I agree with all that. I just, I always took that as the dad. That's interesting. Him. Either way, that is maybe the most it's haunting. Yeah. Hand over the mouth moment because yeah. boy, boy. And and it's such a throwaway thing. He's like, well, I can't hang out with Dominic no more because he's fucking dead. They right. found him in the river. Right. Ugh. Ugh. Podrick does burn down Calm's house. Yep. Calm is still in it and manages to get out. Podrick does not kill the dog. He re- saves the dog. He watches after him for a little bit. Yeah. And then he sees Calm down on the beach and the dog runs up to him, licks his bloody stub of a hand because there's no fingers on it anymore. Uh-huh. And he says to Podrick, I suppose the house calls us quits. And Podrick says, if you stayed in your house, then we'd have called it quits. Uh Jesus fucking Christ. The level that Podrick is now down to because of calm. Like, all the niceness and kindness this guy had, the cheerfulness. We're not not at the rainbow in the background anymore. Like, calm has ruined this guy for life. It's so fucked. And also... The parallel between the Civil War coming to an end, right. but that doesn't mean the cycle of violence is done. Right. Like, I mean, Parik says to him, some things there's no moving on from, and I think that's a good thing. Right. Like, they are they are done. Yeah. I, I almost was going to ask you, Mally, to recap the ending, but that's it. It's no, just like, yeah. Podrick goes to Calm and says, you know, we're not even... But then there is a little bit of hope because yeah. he says, Calm says, thank you for watching my dog. And Patrick says, anytime. Ugh. And, you know, Miss McCormick is up on the on the horizon watching them. Yeah, what, watching it from the burned house. And, and my biggest question is, where do these two go from here? Right. Because I don't think... Podrick thinks it's over. Right. And it'll be a mighty hard moment for Calm to come to. Yeah. Because he only cuts off fingers on one hand. Right. Does he then go to the next hand? Does he go to the fingers, uh, the toes? Or like, where does it end? How does he cut off the other fingers now? Right. Though? Right. I think that this is, yeah, I think they're done with each other. I don't think that this ultimatum that uh, Colm has given him is something that he sticks to after this. But do, I think- do you think Podrick just offers to watch his dog again as like an act of kindness because he's not like Colm? I don't know. That's the interesting part, right? Yeah. I, I, I just don't know. Like, does Calm learn anything from this? Yeah. Is my question. Do you think he's over this? I think he's, I mean, I think he's literally sabotaged himself. Right. And, you know, I mean, he 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 thought this ultimatum would be enough to get him the space he needs to, like, work through this, you know, midlife crisis. Yeah. And instead, he's, now he can't even write fucking music anymore. The one thing he wanted to do was play music, and now he can't even fucking do that anymore. Because right. of his pettiness, yeah. because of his desire to be more than right and Patrick has lost things too he's lost his donkey he's lost his sister he's lost what i would call a friend in dominic like sure. nobody came out of this positive except maybe shaban right maybe and even then it's it's questionable so like i don't know it's it's incredible that martin mcdonough is able to pull this much at the heartstrings but also make you laugh your ass off yeah. because this movie is fucking hysterical to me this is far and away his best film uh, it's really good i love it's it really fucking good 
And it's the simplest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. There's no red herrings. There's no twists. No, it's just this disintegration. Yeah. Everything yeah. you see is direct. Calm literally comes out and explains the movie. If you don't stop talking to me, I'll cut off my fingers. Yeah. And that's the movie. And that's what he does. And he does. And it keeps getting worse. Yeah. Any last notes we have before we get into the wrap-up segment? Uh, no. I don't think so. All right. Well, I'm going to have another uh, ICB here. Jesus and we'll start Christ. talking about... <laughs> We'll start talking about Prop Cop. Insane Clown Bussy. Insane uh, Clown Bussy. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh, I didn't like that a bit. For new listeners here, we're talking about Prop Cop, which is one of our favorite segments on the show. It's where we look at all of the props in the movie The Banshees of Inishirin, and we cop one for ourselves. Yes. So, Mally, this is your movie. I'll give you first dibs. What prop do you want from The Banshees of Inishirin? I want Calm's violin. Nice. That makes sense. I figured you were going to pick that out of the ukulele. <laughs> what the fuck am I going to do with a goddamn ukulele? <laughs> Nathan, what about you? When uh, when Siobhan is leaving, there is a lamp post, <laughs> I think, next to the water, but it's got like a tiny Celtic cross in, sure. uh, on the top of it. I want that. Yeah. I'm going to go with the weird fucking mess that Colm has just dangling <laughs> from his ceiling in his bedroom. Okay. What the fuck was that shit? Yeah. The one we see on fire later on. What the fuck was that? I like it. <laughs> Uh, okay, what about bit part, which is, of course, we look at all the extras in the movie, uh -huh. preferably a non-named character. We try to recast them as ourselves. Yeah. I will say there's not many options in this movie because most of the characters are named, but I'm going to go with the guy that's sitting in the church pew, <laughs> minding his own business when the priest and Calm start arguing with each other. <laughs> <laughs> the, for whatever reason, the, per the, the Calm storms out of the confessional in the church and the priest steps out and just starts yelling at him and the guy's just like, what the fuck's going on here <laughs> uh what about you nathan i just want to be one of the guys in the uh the, one of the fiddle players sure. hanging out with calm in the bar sure. like that just seems like a fun group uh what about you mally uh, i mean same as last week i just want to be a bar patron <laughs> yeah. all right like i just want to be uh hanging out sipping my guinness enjoying my life you know watching the drama oh man speaking of guinness whoo i've now had Three? Oof. Three, I think. I've been it's been an hour. You have to pee so bad. Let's get through it. this. Let's talk about the silver lining of the Banshees of Indichirin. <laughs> Who would like to go first? Uh, I'll go first. Okay. I had uh, another kind of uh, obvious one, but Siobhan got out. Yeah. yeah. she She's she's the only one who's living the life she actually wants now. Yeah. 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 That's good. Mally, what about you? I mean, the lady at the post office is going to have some gossip. <laughs> That's so accurate. <laughs> That's so good. This is insane. I wrote down three silver linings. Both of you have taken away two of them. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's so... Mrs. McCormick is going to have a field day with this. No, that's not Mrs. McCormick. Or, or Mrs. Arirden, Arirden, that's yeah. Right. yeah, 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 yeah. I have to go with the one I have uh, written down here lastly then, which is Podrick didn't burn down the house while the dog was still inside. There you go. Okay. The dog lived. Okay. The goodest of boys, as we like to say around here. So. Absolutely. Well, let's say this, fellas. Uh, the basis of Inisherin does not end on the most uplifting note. Uh -huh. So uh, we always like to offer an alternative for our listeners, a movie they should double feature with the, the movie of the week. The Banshees of Inishirin, uh, <laughs> like I said, does not end very well. What's the movie they should double feature with? I'll go ahead and go first. Yeah. I'm going to go with another dark comedy that is set in one location, and I'm going to go with the movie Free Fire. Ooh. Ooh, nice. Which I fucking love. Okay. It's a great movie. Even though I think we may even at some point end up doing it on the show, okay. I think you should still watch it. Nice. So- what about you, Nathan? Uh, I'm going to go with the cutest movie Brendan Gleeson ever did, mm. Paddington 2. I have yet <laughs> to see the Paddington movies, and uh, I, I know I need to. They are they are a delight. Okay. I believe you. I believe you. I definitely got to see them. Uh, Mally, what about you? Oh, man. I'm going to have to go with another great Colin Farrell flick, uh -huh. The Gentleman. Oh, mm. nice. I never I saw that, see one. that one. It's fun okay it's 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 definitely a return to form for guy Ritchie. copy that i want to throw something out here sure. uh brendan gleason also starred uh gave a, a, his voice to a movie in 2021 called river dance the animated adventure yeah, i believe man. it i believe holy it. shit there's an animated <laughs> movie based on river dance and i'm just now finding out about it starring <laughs> pierce brosnan as two different characters that makes sense it does yeah no it makes sense it makes sense he also voiced pirate with gout in the pirates Oh. In an adventure with scientists. All right, <laughs> what a title! Pirate with gout. What a title! <laughs> wow, wow, wow! And though there are, there's an exclamation point after pirates oh, and scientists. <laughs> of course, 
How else could you do it? Uh, do we recommend the Banshees of Inisherin? Oh fuck yeah! Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This is my favorite movie of 2022. Ooh, wow! Yeah. Holy shit! Like I, I think I think I'm comfortable saying that. Fair enough, man. I, it's tough for me. Yeah. Granted, my favorite movie of 2021 is Malignant. So <laughs> like, you know, whatever you guys think of my. Uh, taste. <laughs> I, I think it's very hard to top RRR for me. Sure. That's my favorite. But I will say, I, I do recommend this movie with the caveat that you understand what you're getting into. Yeah. Because this is a very dark movie. Yeah. And much like in Bruges, there's tons of laughs per minute, but it is still fucking dark. Yeah. It's heavy. No, I, I, I was like spiraling during this movie. Like sure. this, this is not a fairy tale fucking town. Totally. Nope. <laughs> not right. at all. That what a good callback, by the way. Yes. All right. Well, if you have some thoughts on the movie, the Banshees of Inisherin, you can let Keep us. Keep them to your fucking self. <laughs> <laughs> you can get at us at the Silver Linings playlist at gmail.com and voice your opinions over there. Get at us. You can also give us a suggestion for a movie you think we should cover on the show and we'll consider it. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And you can also DM us on those places as well. And on reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist, there is a whole plethora of information about the show mm -hmm. that you can uh, gleam some information from. <laughs> and if you haven't already, subscribe, rate, leave some feedback, and all of that good stuff. Yeah. Now, fellas, we're getting back to Nathan's pick for movies here <laughs> with our movie for next week. So, Nathan, please give us a clue about what we're talking about. As it turns out, there was plenty of time. Ooh, mm. interesting. I might be dead before next week's episode, by the way, just so you know. I hope you're not. From all the uh, ICBs I've been having in this episode, I have to pee so bad. No, Dustin, we have all the time in the world. Oh, my God. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. I love that. Okay. Well, that's it for Banshee's of Sharon. Next week, we're talking about time and how we have no time for it. <laughs> I should say death and no time for it. Sure, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Nobody's listening at this point. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Speaking of death, I'll say rest in peace, Oatmail. And uh, as always, get the feck out of here. <laughs> I'm nice. <laughs> Pony shite. Excelsior. 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 Oh, look at us. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters.